This time on the show, testing a new wireless 802.11 AC router, captive portals on a Wi-Fi pineapple, and what to do when your school has really terrible privacy practices. All that and more this time on Hack5. This segment is brought to you by Untangle. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My yeah, name is Darren yeah. Kitchen and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. And this week I am coming to you guys from Toggy. No, that's that's not me being silly. That's Tog.ie. It is the uh, hacker space in Ireland, in Dublin. That's where I am now. Uh, hacking Across Europe. If you guys have been following <laughs> HackacrossEurope.com, uh, there's a little meetup going on here doing a little bit of... Um, these are uh, lock picking and whatnot, so uh, please excuse any of the background noise. There may be cursing and whatnot, but uh, there are Irish, don't worry about it. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about this week is captive portals, and this is kind of something that uh, is, you know, a little near and dear to my heart because you guys know how I feel about Les Wiffies. That's my French to the one there. And uh, in fact, this is something that I was recently playing with uh, to great extents in um, Geneva last week. As soon as I got into the hotel, I don't have any cell service whatsoever. I haven't gotten a SIM card and I'm just trying to find some sort of internet access. Thankfully, of course, before I got on any flight or anything, I'll, I'll get, uh, it's later in the series, I'm talking about the full description and the other kinds of stuff for crossing borders, but one thing in particular is setting myself up with some VPNs. We're going to be doing a little PPTP, pop pop kind of stuff here soon, um, but the nice thing about uh, VPNs, uh, as well as uh, any sort of uh, other tunnel, like an SSH tunnel, uh, or if you want to really want to get fancy, uh, tunneling IP over um, over DNS, is that it, in many circumstances, allows you to bypass captive portals. So what's a captive portal? That's that page that you get whenever you log on to an open Wi-Fi where it wants some sort of uh, authentication. It wants you to accept uh, a, a, an acceptable use policy. It wants you to uh, log in to pay the money. Uh, in fact, we just found one on the way to this hackerspace over at the Radisson, and it's really interesting the way that this works. I've run into this at other hotels before, specifically uh, the Mandalay Bay in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, the way that it works is it asks you for your surname and your room number. And you can already imagine right now uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is, is send a brute force or an online brute force or after it because literally you can just type in a room number and Smith or in the case of Ireland, you might want to type in Murphy, and then just keep incrementing the room number. And I tried that here, and I love the uh, this particular one because not only does it just say, you know, uh, now you got the name wrong, so just keep trying different names or different room numbers, uh, or it will actually tell you there's no occupancy. So that's all sorts of other fun that's kind of beyond the scope of captive portals, but uh, this is an example of one. Uh, I ran into these in Geneva, and it was really nice that I was able to bypass them and actually get internet access without having to pay for it just by using the VPN that I set up before leaving the house. Um, right on my phone, PPTP and connected. That's not always going to be the case. More often than not, you're going to have to use something like um, uh, DNS tunnel.de or uh, DNS scappy to bypass these sorts of things. But uh, uh, regardless, captive portals can be really fun, and I thought I'd show you guys an example of how you can set one up on OpenWRT. I'm using Wi-Fi Pineapple right here, and uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's begin by SSHing over to our Pineapple route at 172.16.42.1. So we're going to be setting up no dog off, which is like no cat off, but it's a dog instead of a cat. It's a captive portal software. There's two different variants of it. There's no uh, dog off, which is both a, a gateway and an off server. It's uh, made for OpenWRT, so it's great for embedded hardware. It's open source, and it allows you to do a fancy little captive portal where you can either have a, a policy or a password or whatever kind of gateway you want to set up. I specifically just want to have like a splash screen before you get to 
for the real internet. Uh, so I'm actually using a variant called No Dog Splash. That's literally just going to allow me to do a splash screen. It's all in one. It's got both services tied together. Um, and it's going to make it really easy for me to do any sort of port restriction with IP tables. And this is really nice bandwidth control. So even if you're not interested in setting up a, a you know a captive portal for any uh, policy kind of reasons, it is kind of nice in that it does uh, bandwidth restrictions by users. And you can even use this on your own home router to set up a, de a separate uh, a separate uh, SSID that's open as opposed to your closed network. And then using the rules in a comp file, you could keep people inside of a, a subnet that wouldn't be able to touch your own network. So I've already gone ahead and installed uh, the new dog splash application on this uh, OpenWRT router. Uh, however, if you need to get that far, it's really simple. OP, uh, do an OPKG update. Uh, once you've uh, gotten your packages updated, uh, you'll want to install. It's called uh, no dog splash as well as uh, IP tables, TAC mod, TAC IMQ, and KMOD IPT IMQ, and KMOD Sketch. So once you have all of those, uh, you should be uh, all set to go, and it's just a regular service. So you'll find it in slash etsy slash init.v, if I say ls that. You'll see there I have uh, my no dog splash running. Go on the register upwards. And I can now go ahead and start configuring this. So in slash etsy slash no dog splash, you're going to find uh, the htdocs folder, and that's where all of the web files are going to live for this, as well as the no dog splash conf. So let's take a quick look at that. So why no dog splash conf? And right out of the box, it gets most of the configuration done for you automatically. There really isn't a whole lot of tweaking you need to do if there's nothing super fancy that you're trying to achieve. Uh, first off, uh, the gateway interface. So in this case, VRLAN. This is the bridged LAN interface on OpenWRT that is the wired network and the wireless network put together. Uh, we also have our firewall, uh, firewall rule set. And here we can actually allow different uh, TCP and UDP ports. Uh, so by default, it's already set up for 80 and 443 for your standard you know www uh, as well as 22 uh, and for SSH and 53 for uh, DNS we have um, you know a bunch of different uh, ways to restrict those ports and if we come down here each day is eight hours we can actually see uh, where is it so uh, here we can actually name it by default. It's called no dog splash, but this is really just a variable that's going to come into play when we customize our splash screen. And we can give it the gateway IP address. It will figure this all out by default. And our redirect URL. And so I have the redirect URL going to hack5.org. And so what that means is once we have allowed users to access the internet through this splash screen, uh, they're going to get forwarded over to this URL. So don't met it, make it lemon party, make it something good. Uh, we can also specify how many clients. In this case, the default is to have 20 clients. Uh, we can set the timeout. So after 10 minutes, it's going to go ahead and uh, deactivate anybody on, uh, on here. And by default, it doesn't have... Uh, oh, and we, we can also set... Um, MAC address blocking and allowing. So we can already pre-configure different devices to be on the allowed list based on the MAC address. Uh, and we can specifically block uh, access. And we can also use a command line tool to do a lot of this configuration rather than just editing the comp file and restarting the service over and over. Uh, we get the choice between password authentication. We can have just a single password to sign on, as well as username and passwords. Uh, this is, of course, all stale, stored in a plain text Etsy config file, um, but that option is there. Uh, password attempts five, so after five, it's not going to let you through. And then the traffic control. Uh, so traffic control is really cool because we can actually specify a download limit. And in this case, it's set to 384, so that would be uh, 384 uh, kilobits a second um, uh, download per client connection. 
Uh, same as an upload limit. We can also specify IP ranges that they are not allowed to touch, which is really nice, you know, because you don't want somebody getting on uh, your you know, public network that has this captive portal and then accessing your home network. So uh, pretty much out of the box, this is all ready to go. So I'll go ahead and uh, and write. Okay, get out of Vi, and let's take a look at NVS for no dog, uh, uh, no dog splash CTL for control, and we can see here's where we're able to block by MAC address, unblock, allow certain MAC addresses, set MAC addresses as trusted, and, and so on and so forth. We can add usernames and passwords this way. So you can imagine if, say, you had a backend, you could make a really simple backend system in PHP uh, or, or whatever your language of choice may be to add usernames and passwords to this. Uh, it's just very simple and quick and easy to set up. Uh, mainly what I'm interested in right here is uh, the status. And you'll see that uh, you know it shows um, where the splash page is, where the redirect URL is, and the client's connected. And currently I don't have any clients connected. Let's go ahead and modify our splash page before we get our clients connected. So in HDDocs, we're gonna notice that there's an images folder uh, as well as our splash HTML and our uh, InfoScale HTML. InfoScale is for the CSS kind of stuff, uh, but mainly everything's happening in splash HTML. So let's take a look at that. So I've already modified this just a bit. Uh, by default, it tells you just the name of your uh, your gateway. Again, all of this coming from that configuration file. Uh, and I have it pulling an image from the uh, images directory for a uh, skull and crossbone, and have it give you a nice little warning that says, everything you do on the internet can be, and most likely is, monitored. As well as our, uh, our click through. So in this case, this is where I would be putting an acceptable use policy. In this case, I just kind of want to like reiterate the point that is all of this is watched. Um, and down here, really all we have to do to give people access is they have to click the link to the auth target. So uh, do a, just a simple ahref in HTML to dollar auth target and then make it whatever you, you want. So mine just says, click here to the access the internet if you dare. So we'll go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and uh, actually take a look at how this uh, seems Ooh. on my phone. All right, so what you can see here now is I have my Galaxy Note set up. This is the phone that I've been rocking on this trip, as well as the Wi-Fi Pineapple running the No Dog Splash. And what's beautiful about this is as soon as I tap Wi-Fi, it goes ahead and uh, starts my radio. And then down here we can see connected automatically to the Pineapple. And we get this pop-up up at the top, and it says sign into Wi-Fi network. So one, we've already automatically connected. <laughs> so thank you, Samsung, for that. That was wonderful, uh, because, of course, this is a remembered network. Mind you, I haven't even turned on Karma, so this is just, you know, because it's remembered. But uh, otherwise, I get this special sign into Wi-Fi network. And I know that it's in order for this to happen, the Wi-Fi pineapple does need to be set up with internet access. So I have it provided internet access through my laptop and so since the phone is able to get a DNS connection through but nothing else, it knows that there must be a captive portal and I get this. On a Apple device it automatically pops up a window which is really brilliant because then you can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Uh, but at this point all I have to do is tap this and it'll ask me which browser do I want to use. I pop open a browser and I get my message. So it should be pretty obvious by now the kinds of fun that you can have, especially with smartphones, when they automatically pop up these captive portals. Thank you, Apple. Although I should mention that I did run into a couple of difficulties setting this up on the Wi-Fi Pineapple at first. And so the quick lesson learned here is if you have a captive portal, say, No Dog Splash running on port 80, you're probably going to want to turn off uh, micro HTTPD that's also trying to run on port 80. Yeah, I know, I know. Why am I still learning this lesson? Anyway, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I want to hear what you guys think uh, and what kind of uh, fun stuff that we can do with captive portals in the pineapple. But you also may be thinking like, hey, I want to run a captive portal of my own. I don't have a pineapple or I just want to get something uh, running up quickly. 
and I have been on this trip using exclusively Untangle, and they are also sponsoring this episode, and it kind of ties in beautifully because they have a captive portal. So here's the part where I thank our sponsor and say that if you are thinking about uh, updating that outdated firewall you have, that UTM, that gateway, whatever it may be, and you're wondering how Untangle Staps stacks up. We've talked about them in the past on the show. We love these guys, and I think you might be surprised because really out of the box, it's one of the most complete solutions that you can get, You know, whether it be a hardware solution directly from them or just putting their software on your spare PC or even virtualization. I'm actually running uh, a bunch of virtual machines on my Lenovo here and using Untangle to kind of do act as the gateway for all of those, which is a really cool concept. I'm going to get into that here soon. Um, and basically, Untangle gets the job done for less cash. So uh, I encourage you guys to try it free. There's no commitment. Like I said, you can download it and just put, run it on a virtual machine or on your spare hardware. And if, you, uh, and if you'd like, they have all of these awesome free apps. It's all open source. Uh, like I said, there's a captive portal, which I was just playing with, and it turns out really easy to integrate it with an existing radius server or an active directory server which is really cool or you can all roll your own local which is neat and uh, allow you to do just a very simple like uh, check the box here to accept the policy kind of captive portal or even one uh, extensive with authentication and um, anyway, if you also you need a bunch of uh, advanced filtering, they've got uh, you know web content filtering, app content filtering. They've got policy management, bandwidth control. Their premium package may be of interest to you, and they want to hook our Hack Five fans up with a 14-day free trial of their premium package. All you have to do is go over to untangle.com/hak5, and I, also they want to hook you guys up with 20% off the list price if you do decide that that is something that you'll enjoy. Uh, and so I encourage you all to go over to untangle.com slash hack5. Check it out. It's all really cool open source stuff. And we thank them again for sponsoring Hack5. So uh, with all of that, I'm going to go ahead and throw back to uh, Shannon and Paul in studio. And I will see you next week uh, from Berlin. Cheers. <laughs>